Welcome to the Registered Investment Advisor Podcast, where financial services marketing expert Seth Green interviews experts, executives, and top producers to share can't-miss tips on how they successfully manage their financial service firms, grow their businesses, create great relationships, and influence the industry. And now, here's your host, Seth Green. Welcome to the RIA podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be joined by Steve Nelson, co-founder and CEO of Capital Insight Partners. Steve, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Let's go back in time a little bit. How'd you get started in the business in the first place? Because I know you have a history before CIP. Right. Well, I had actually been in ministry for four years and during that time got an MBA, decided to get married. And, and that's when I took... Uh, a big career change from ministry to the investment field. But in graduate school, I've been quite interested in finance and investing. And so that's what prompted the move. Okay. So I got to, we got to dive in just for a second on that. You ministry to financial planning. It's a different type of call. I would imagine. Um, how did that go? Can you tell me a little bit more about how that happened? Sure. Well, again, I, uh, when I worked for uh, the church, I also got an MBA. And when I decided to get married, I, I looked at kind of the uh, financial um, opportunities available in both career tracks and decided that uh, being married, I should probably move over to finance in the for-profit world. In the not-for-profit world in ministry, we always talk about the retirement benefits being out of this world, but I still felt that I had to provide for my my new family. So, And how did uh, Capital Insight Partners come about? So I was fortunate in my career. I've been very fortunate to do a lot of different things, but most notably, I was a partner at a firm. I became the 10th partner in a firm when it had about $2 billion. So when I left, we managed six and a half billion, my partners and I. And so uh, unfortunately, as we grew, we became an investment committee, meaning we had too many people, too many portfolio managers trying to make decisions and decided that uh, with performance beginning to suffer there, therefore, that I needed to make a change. And so uh, eventually found my way uh, with a great young woman. I'm very proud that Susan co-founded the firm, but Susan Anastasiadis and I were at Merrill Lynch at the time then. And uh, about a month before Merrill went bankrupt and got sold to B of A, she and I left in August of 2008 and started Capital Insight. So we're here in Scottsdale. We're very fortunate in that we serve clients in 32 states. So we really cover the country. Uh, from Hawaii to New York and Florida to Seattle, which is a, a great benefit for many reasons, but one of which is in the hot summers of Scottsdale, Arizona, we can get out of here and go travel. Well, good for you. And I'm sure the long version of that story should be in a book somewhere if it isn't already. So let's talk a little bit about who are the types of clients that CIP serves? So we have several legs to our stool. The biggest is, of course, private clients, and we serve clients with $2 million minimum. And again, they're spread throughout the country. Um, it's a traditional wealth management practice. Uh, we sort of lead with investment management. Uh, I and several others on the team are CFAs and portfolio managers. We are a global core multi-asset class manager, and we employ a GARP strategy, growth at a reasonable price. Uh, the reason being markets ebb and flow and sometimes values in favor, sometimes growth. We built a lot of flexibility into how we manage money for clients. And even in the IPSs, uh, we have a lot of flexibility as to raise cash or tilt more towards fixed income or more towards equity. So I think uh, part of the goal uh, when you're a portfolio manager is to protect the capital that's been entrusted to you. So we take that fiduciary mindset because I've always been in trust companies really my whole career. So we always take that mindset that job one is to protect capital and then job two, of course, is to grow it. And we're happy to go anywhere in the world to do so. Well, good for you. And how has uh, that approach worked? Because you've been doing it for a long time. Yes, it's it's worked very well. I mean, the firm's had pretty rapid growth. We've had a CAGR, I think, north of 20% since we started in 2008. And uh, I should mention it's the private client business and then the other parts of our business. One of the benefits we've had is organic growth, but also inorganic growth. And so we acquired a firm several years ago that was really a specialist in financial planning, and it brought us CFP expertise. 
as well as 401k expertise. We, before that, had a handful of 401k plans, and we just knew that you can't be a part-timer in ERISA. So we acquired that expertise, and that worked beautifully. And then a couple of years ago, about two and a half years ago, we acquired another money manager here in Scottsdale. And so that uh, inorganic growth has also been beneficial. And then um, beyond the 401k and the private client, we also do SMA work for other advisors throughout the country. And then the newest piece of our growth strategy has been to, uh, to launch an ETF in the Christian value space. Our ticker symbol is PREY, and that is a global stock fund, all cap, go anywhere in the world, anytime. It also has a risk managed component, but we just love the ticker symbol PREY, P-R-A-Y. Yeah, it's great that you were able to get that. So you've got private client, you've got the institutional side, you're serving as an SMA for other for other firms. How are you getting the word out about that? How are you getting other firms to take notice of you and pick you as one of their managers? Well, a lot of it historically for us anyway, has been just advisors that we meet along the way. So in part of our firm's history coming out of Merrill Lynch, Susan and I were dual registered. And so while most of the business was traditional RIA, there was a brokerage component to it. Today in our firm, Susan is the only one who's still licensed, a Series 7 license, um, because on occasion there are clients who maybe bought an, an annuity somewhere else or bring us holdings that you need a traditional BD relationship to take care of the client. And so Susan does that now for us. But through the years, we met a lot of advisors um, as we were part of those BD firms. And that's really the origin of our SMA work. That makes a lot of sense. How do you feel that because you've got different legs to your table, for lack of a better analogy, that benefits clients in a lot of different ways? How has that been received? It's been received very well because no matter what a client brings to us, we can help. And that that's a beautiful thing. Um, and I think that notion of being flexible and being nimble and being open to opportunities uh, sometimes it can derail your focus when you're trying to grow a business, but it can also be quite helpful because when you see an opportunity before you, you can jump on it. And if you're trying to grow your RIA, uh, I think having a kind of an open spirit about where the opportunities may lie can be very beneficial. It has been for us. Absolutely. And with all the success you've achieved for yourself, for the firm and for the clients, what's your biggest challenge now? The biggest challenge is growing prey. We're very excited about uh, this offering. It's it's the smallest part of our business. You know, we're a traditional secular money manager, but I do believe that Christian values investing is a, a very important element of the investment universe, and yet it's still somewhat at its infancy. So I believe we have a tremendous opportunity before us. And uh, the biggest challenge we have is we're a boutique firm, and how do you get the word out? Um, uh, particularly all across the country. So uh, fortunately, there are some uh, strategic partners uh, that have joined us to help spread the good news, if you will, of that fund. Uh, but I think that's the biggest uh, challenge. The clients that we have are terrific. The staff is amazing. Um, we're just very blessed in many ways around here. And I think it's just staying focused on the client as always and continuing to grind it out um, in hard markets like this, knowing that better days are coming. And, and if you can keep marketing and stay focused on the value proposition that the firm has, not only at our firm, but at any firm, you'll succeed over time. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about the team that you've built. I know you've brought some great people on and helped grow them as well. Well, thank you. Susan uh, Anastasiadis is the co-founder of the firm. She has an MBA. She's terrific. Susan and I have been partners for about 16 years. And I think one thing that's very important when you're putting together a leadership team is to make sure that you have people who complement. I'm kind of the dreamer and the visionary, and Susan's the realist for our firm. So the two of us are a great complement to make sure we don't make big mistakes as we're out trying to grow. Uh, Craig McCroy joined us and is now our CIO. Uh, Craig came just four months after we started the company. He's just a rock solid analyst and human being, uh, but I think he really grounds us in good research, um, traditional, uh, you know, fundamental research on securities. 
And I think he brings a lot of wisdom. And I guess if there were another element I'd mentioned to trying to grow an RIA, it's that you've got to be wise. You've got to know when to go on offense and you've got to know when to go on defense. You've got to somehow figure out when you need to spend more time internally taking care of the existing clients versus looking externally to market and to grow. Um, through the course of our company's history, there have been different times where the focus has had to shift a little bit from one to the other. But um, over time, if you have a team of great people who you trust, you like, you have fun working with, um, you're gonna go through crises together. So you wanna make sure that these are people you wanna be in the boat with when uh, the seas are rough and then the good times kind of take care of themselves. Absolutely. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? We get to help people. You know, we get to we get to make a tremendous difference in their lives for good or for ill. So if we're skilled as portfolio managers and if we can communicate a vision that allows people to take sufficient time in the market, time invested in the market, then we know what we do well bring great gifts to their lives and their families. Part of the challenge is you've you've got to work with people, but part of the greatest joy is you've got to work, you get to work with people. And so it's a real pleasure for us to serve the families that we serve and to serve the other FAs that we serve. All right. Well, we know your time's incredibly valuable. We greatly appreciate you spending some of it with us. For our folks who are watching or listening, where is the best place for them to go to learn more about Steve Nelson and Capital Insight? Yes, uh, CIPinvest.com for Capital Insight Partners. So CIPinvest.com. And then the ticker symbol, obviously, for the ETF was Prey. And where do they go to learn about uh, your SMA business? Uh, really, CIPinvest.com is the best place for that. But uh, back to Prey, um, if they go to faithinvestorservices.com slash Prey, there's about a two-minute video uh, right in the upper right-hand corner that does a good job of explaining um, what that fund is about. It's faithinvestorservices.com slash pray. All right. Well, this has been Seth Green with Steve Nelson. Steve, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. We'll talk to you or see you next time.